why do we spend an hour of our life talking about research data types and research data formats? Well, mostly because I think data is pretty darn important. Um, we discussed earlier, we have two uh, theoretical definitions of data, from Borgman and from Gold, and they both pretty much say that data is the foundation of scholarship. It's the building blocks of knowledge. It's the most important <coughs> part of research is your data. So being able to describe and understand what you're using and working with is really important. So research data management. This is, might not be the first or the last time you see this definition, but data management is part of the research process. It's not something you do at the end of a project. It's not something you start doing halfway through. It's something you think about at the very beginning. Um, and it aims to make sure that your research is efficient. Part of the reason that you manage research data is so that you actually save money and so that uh, you don't have to do big costs and redo experiments and things like that. But more importantly for some folks, it helps meet expectations. Your university, your research center, your funders, the government. Um, in, the US, in the US government, open standard or open data is, is default. So when you write a grant for the NSF or for NOAA, you're going to put your data in a repository. It's not really your choice, you know, because it's, it's law here and it's, uh, it's a push. And the UK has been doing it for years. They've been doing, quite frankly, a much better job than us. Um, and so research data is important. Um, and this is the working definitions of data management. Why do we want to do this? Most importantly, because it's the right thing to do. Um, transparency is important. Transparency leads to integrity. So if good data management makes your process very easy to follow, if you have lab notebooks and you have methodologies, you're creating code books for your data sets, you're explaining what variables mean, you're explaining why you collected it the way you did, you're leaving breadcrumbs for other researchers to come behind you and to pick up those breadcrumbs and you know, to follow that path of scholarship, to advance scholarship. It makes science move faster. It creates new discoveries. The coolest thing that's ever been done with your data has never even been thought of yet. There's things that can be done with your samples, your collections, the products of your research that cannot even be found. 20 years from now, researchers will pick up where you left off and find something new. So it's important. And compliance. I don't want to harp on compliance, but you know, it's a trend. In the States here, in uh, February 2013, I promise this isn't the last time you read this book today. Um, in February 2013, the Office of Science and Technology Policy, which is headed by Dr. Holdren, issued a memorandum to uh, all of the funding agencies underneath them. OSTP is part of the White House. And uh, it says that the direct results of uh, funded research is going to be made available to the public. This isn't just call, talking about journal articles, which is great. It's also talking about data sets. So you have to have a way of making your data open. And so the OSTP made this mandate that we are going to do this in 2013. And what every funder agency did in response is create their own data management requirements most of which require some sort of data management plan that has to be submitted as a supplement to your proposal. Um, so I'm going to very briefly show you a couple things just so we can tie all this together. First one I'm going to show you is the National Science Foundation. Um, how many of you work with NSF Research or Manage Grants or, well, that's okay, it's an international crowd. Um, and so the NSF requires a two-page data management plan for all their projects. And I want to bring your attention to something. Look at the first Look at the first uh, thing that they need. Each director is slightly different. This is a generic one. They want to know the types of data being created. So what we just did now, all of you listing all the data types, you have to do that. So congrats, you saved yourself a little bit of work. Um, and look at the second one, standards to be used for data and metadata, format and content. <coughs> so what format is your data? What is the file extension? Is it proprietary or non-proprietary? I can tell you from working with NSF grants, they always prefer non-proprietary file formats whenever possible. Um, that's why we talk about these things. These are things that you have to know and do to create a data management plan. Another example. Um, here we go, Noah. It's hard to format. Anyway, I don't know where those links go to. But this is from Noah, so you know, primarily meteorology. Another group I work with a lot. Very first thing, type of data and information created. You have to list all that information. And look at uh, section number three, the standards for format and content. Now you're going to learn a lot more about preservation and access and making things open and making sure that research is described properly to make discoverable and accessible. I want to show you is kind of, before you can do all that, you actually have to know what you have. So um, hopefully today, 
what I have gotten you to do is I've gotten you to rethink how you think about data management, or rethink what you think is a <coughs> research data. Data is almost everything, folks. It's, it's your thoughts, it's the project background, it's collection, it's, it's analysis, it's final publication, it's subsequent learning and sharing. Data is a lot. Um, and so I want to challenge you, try to use non-proprietary formats whenever possible, even if it's your final data set. Um, and really, the, the more you know about this stuff, the easier it's going to be to manage your research data effectively. So what I hope that I did today was provide you a little bit of foundational knowledge. At the very least, you all know a little bit more about each other now um, and about your projects. So uh, you know, I really appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you.